available, we definitely appreciate it. Sure, my pleasure. Um, so starting off, can you tell me your first and last name and what you do with the Pearl District Neighborhood Association? Yes, my name is Stan Penkin. I am the president of the Pearl District Neighborhood Association. Um, so we wanted to touch base and talk a little bit about the uh, protests that happened last night in the Pearl District. Um, specifically, you said you were out cleaning this morning. Um, what did you see and hear from your community? So let me tell you, first of all, here in the Pearl District, we have a what we call clean team program. It's a group of somewhere between 40 and 50 volunteers who go out uh, every week. We uh, have the Pearl uh, designated into seven zones and we have so we go out in different zones every week. We also have a foot patrol with some 40 to 50 volunteers. So we are a neighborhood that does a lot to take care of ourselves, uh, partly because city resources are thin and we have to take a lot upon ourselves. So uh, going out this morning, we gathered our teams together. And as it turned out, a lot of the private businesses and private uh, and property owners had already gotten contractors out there cleaning up glass, boarding up windows. So a lot of it was already done. We did a little bit. We walked around, we surveyed the neighborhood um, and did a little bit of cleanup. We, we have a graffiti team. We cleaned up a little bit of the graffiti. There's lots of graffiti uh, throughout the neighborhood. So we're doing everything we can. It is certainly a uh, frightening and frustrating time, not just for our neighborhood, but I think for the entire city. Um, so, I mean, it seems that usually these protests seem to be focused on certain areas, sometimes the Justice Center, sometimes the ICE Detention Center. Um, the Pearl seems to be a little bit of a different area whether or not they think that is because if they are in the Pearl District, it gets more attention or because of the immigration services building that is on that is in the Pearl District. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, can you speculate as to why they would have targeted the Pearl District at all? I really can't. I, I, I don't think anyone can really speculate what uh, this group is about. Well, I think we know what they're about, but why they do what they do. Um, the Pearl was attacked previously. I forget when it was, but when they attacked the building where the mayor lived at the time, as you may recall. And I'm not sure why they target the Pearl. They perhaps perceive the Pearl erroneously as being the so-called elite Tony place that the media very often purports us to be, which is, I say it's erroneous because we, we have the largest population of uh, low income, uh, affordable housing in the entire, of any neighborhood in the city, somewhere, somewhere in the neighborhood of 30%. So uh, we are often mislabeled and perhaps some of those folks feel they can target the Pearl because of that. Um, so what are potential next steps for this area? I mean, obviously, with the small businesses that are very, very important to the Pearl District, um, is there, you know, going to be more meetings? Is there going to be, you said you guys have foot patrols. What, what might you guys be looking at in terms of just your community itself? Well, it, it, it's, it's uh, interesting that you ask because a group of us, including our uh, livability chair, livability and safety committee chair, and others were having a conversation this morning uh, talking about perhaps creating another subcommittee. And we have many committees. We, we are, as, as you can tell, a very, very active neighborhood. So we are looking at, to see what else we can do. We, we certainly feel we need more communication from the city about what actions they are taking. Uh, it, it's one thing to hear that uh, from our leaders that they don't support the vandalism and criminal activity, but the people in this city, and I'm not just talking about the Pearl District, I'm talking about the entire city. We need more communication. We need to know 
what actions is the city really taking? Communicate with us. We, we feel there should be a weekly communication to the entire city as to what actions are being taken. Uh, uh, and it, it's, it's, not just, it's not just the vandalism, it's the graffiti, it's the trash throughout the city, uh, it's the homeless situation. And granted, these are very challenging situations. And we understand that the city has limited resources, which is why here in the Pearl, we follow the philosophy of communities and government working together. However, I, I feel at this point that the communities and not just the Pearl, but others as well, are doing more than their share. And there's on, only so much we can sustain with volunteers. So we need, we need more help. We're doing what we can, but we need more help and more communication. Um, that kind of leads to maybe kind of my next question, which is um, how can people help? Is it visiting these small businesses, helping them out? And how, how can people help um, the Pearl and, and kind of hopefully, you know, move past this a little bit? Well, one, one thing, we are certainly, although I represent a neighborhood association, we coordinate, we try, we try to coordinate very closely with the business association as well, and with other neighborhoods. We're not just an insular neighborhood. We coordinate and collaborate with downtown, Old Town, Northwest, Goose Hollow, all the neighboring communities. And um, one of the things, everyone can do. First of all, we need everybody to cooperate with each other and realize we're all in this together. And um, I, I think that it's important that we communicate to the city. So budget season is just about upon us. The uh, mayor has asked bureaus across the city to uh, reduce their budgets by 5%. And quite honestly, we can't afford to have the police bureau reduce their budget 5%. They were already under-resourced. Uh, the protests and the vandalism of this past year has taken its toll. We are losing police officers. Uh, we need more money, not less, for our police bureau uh, because we need more training. They need more training. We need to have uh, improvements in, in police reform. Uh, there, is, there are, are some systemic issues. I think many of us agree to that, but our police really work hard, but it's under-resourced and they, they um, can't continue this way. We, 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 need, we need improvement. So everybody needs to speak up. City council has to hear from everybody about what they want, what they need, uh, letters, testimony, um, that sort of thing. Uh, everybody, everybody just has to speak up. And I'm not saying, I mean, the city is, certainly understands the issues. Uh, and again, it's extremely challenging, but we can't go on this way as a city. We have to find real solutions. Um, is there anything that you wanted to mention or touch on that we may not have uh, talked about? I, I think we pretty, pretty much touched upon the things that I think we here are concerned about. Perfect. Well, Stan, I think that's all I've got, but if I have any more questions, can I send you a quick email? Oh, absolutely, sure. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Stan. We definitely appreciate it. Okay. Uh, if, if you do run something, do you know when it will run on this? Um, it, should, it should be our five o'clock show, I believe. So, um, but I can also, send you the link to the story when it does run as well. Okay. It'll be on our, on our site. That'll be as well. fine. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Stan. Okay. Thank you. you have a good day. You too. Bye-bye now. Yeah.